guys, it's Erin. I'm here at the At Homestead and I wanted to talk to you guys about pests. It's June, we're fighting pests these days. We are having to deal with all kinds of, let's see, white flies, aphids, cutworms, leaf miners, cabbage moths, cabbage worms, all the things, <laughs> and of course, regular mosquitoes. And we all want to garden in a way to save our bees and to bring beneficial insects and save our pollinators. So I wanted to put together just a little video of how I garden. Um, and I thought maybe it would help some of you and maybe you already know how to do these things, which is awesome. And I'd love to have you share that with me. I am not a certified organic gardener, but I do feel like I garden organically and there is a big difference be between being a certified organic garden because I use fertilizer and I use a foliar spray. And while those are all natural things that I use, they do, and they're not chemicals, they're not toxic, but they do have ingredients that are considered uh, a synthetic because they have been manufactured and they're not uh, from plants, animals, or the byproduct of those things. So because the ingredients are made synthetically, I'm not considered an organic gardener, but I'm not going to market, I'm not branding myself as such, um, but everything I do on the most part, I feel like is a very basic way to garden organically. So organic gardening is when the flowers, herbs, and vegetables don't have any applications of chemical or synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, or pesticides. So what are some pests that we all have and some natural ways that I've learned over the years to get rid of them or combat them? Thanks, cabbage moth, for making my point. <laughs> cabbage moths are the white, beautiful, cute butterflies, but they have that one black spot on the like left wing. I think it's the left wing. Anyway. I came over here to the tomato tunnel because tomatoes and aphids, we all have them. We all deal with them and they're annoying. <laughs> Peppers and white flies. Anybody? Just me? Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, what about squash bugs? I've got squash over here. Got my cucumbers over here, my fancy gourds, my mini pumpkins, and then I've got zucchini and Jaredell pumpkins down there. Squash bugs all over squash bugs or stink bugs by the way i don't know why no one says that um because i had to kind of learn the hard way i was like what's a squash bug is that a squash bug oh you see their eggs typically instead of the bug and the bug is the stink bug and the squash bug um as well and they lay their eggs and then they're super annoying so oh and don't get me started about the worms how many worms do we have hook worms cabbage worms cut worms parsley worms right and it's not the good worms. These are all the worms that are eating our plants. So how do we take care of them? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I've been learning over the years, the 10 years that I've been gardening, how to handle these things and some of them that you just have to, to live with or handpick. So the number one thing that I do to help my garden get the best start it can when it comes to bugs is plant flowers. I plant things that attract the predators, for the insects that I know are gonna come that I wanna keep away, or I plant host plants. So I've got a bunch of marigolds. I wanted to show you this shot because every single one of my bed has a marigold or two, typically two, one on either side, in the front and in the back. We've got the snowball marigold here. We've got the lady primrose, right? I'm sorry, that's the triple threat, triple treat. <laughs> I always call it the triple threat. This one is the triple treat right there. And then down there in the little bed that's kind of peeking around the corner by the terracotta plant, boop. That's the lady primrose that finally came up and I was like, yay. So marigolds are the number one plant that I plant to keep pests away. I also plant a whole bunch of herbs to keep pests away. And everyone knows my number one plant to plant as a host plant is my beloved nasturtium. It's my Alaska variegated nasturtium. And she's looking particularly lovely. So native flowering plants like fennel, mint, dill, parsley, cilantro, zinnias, marigolds, 
they are great at attracting beneficial in insects that a variety of beneficial insects that take care of a lot of the insects that we consider pests. The number two thing that I do in my garden is I watch my leaves. I am out here monitoring my garden to see if any of my leaves have any type of change on them, any type of damage, like down here. I'll show you my damage. It's all right, it's from overwatering, I know. I know because it's wilty, it's overwatered. But I watch and monitor my garden to not only look for the insects, but look for the different damage left by the insects. Um, this is done by myself, but if there were aphids on here, they would be sucking my plants dry. Um, they would be causing a lot of havoc on my tomatoes, especially if I had an infestation and I would be able to see them. I currently don't see any, which is very nice. But as you know, if you've been following me, I've had lots of aphids this year. It's just kind of the year. Now, most things like my cabbage, I'm going to show you here. This cabbage is absolutely fine to eat. It has been eaten on by caterpillars, probably cabbage moth um, caterpillars, because I've seen a lot of cabbage moths here, but it will be fine to eat. I will wash it and soak it and all of that stuff. See all those white flies? I'm battling those two guys, aren't we all? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But those leaves are gonna be fine to eat. You can consume those leaves. There's the one exception, which I know I have, I know I have some, I cut most of them off, but I'm sure I still have some left. Those are leaf miners. When you have leaf miner damage, don't eat the leaves. The leaf miners are still inside. They're not toxic to you, but I mean, nobody wants to eat a leaf miner. I think my nasturtium had some leaf, leaf miners up here. Yeah. Now this nasturtium has leaf miner damage. Those are those squiggly white lines. We've got one up here too that you can see. Um, and this leaf miner is still in the leaf. So even if I were to um, to pluck this off to eat it, I, I wouldn't, I'm sorry, even if I were to pluck this off like I am now, I wouldn't eat this leaf because the leaf miner is still inside. So one of the ways to handle this, especially with leafy greens, is floating row covers. We have a few, we actually drape them over our blueberries uh, to keep them safe from the cicadas. But it is a permeable material, sunlight gets through, water gets through, and the floating row covers can cover leafy greens like cabbages, kohlrabis, lettuces, anything that the worm can really get onto, all the worms. Um, the row cover is really gonna be the best thing for you to use on those plants. The next best thing that you can do is hand pick. I know that sounds kind of weird because you know what you really wants to be picking off worms and other types of bugs but hand picking can be the sometimes the best way to handle like um squash bugs or ho hornworms the ones that get on your tomato plants especially at night you can pick off hornworms with um a flashlight you see them easier because they glow and squash bugs you can easily pick off and the squash bug eggs are easy to pick off too because you can just use a lint roller or a piece of blue painter's tape and it comes off super easy without damaging your plant. So some people like to battle aphids and white fly, well aphids mostly, um, mites and mealybugs with water spraying, especially with some soaps, people suggest soaps, but soaps can also kill beneficial insects. So keep that in mind when you consider water spraying with soap. Water spraying aphids is very, very commonly suggested for tomatoes. But in my area, it gets so humid in our area that it can lead to diseases and from overwatering, and it could also lead to disease, other diseases that I don't really want my tomatoes to be susceptible to yet because the you know we're all always fighting that battle. Instead, I use neem oil. Now neem oil is some people love neem oil, other people hate it, just like how I feel like with vermiculite. Um, I spray it on. Uh, my tomatoes for the aphids at that's where I've gotten to a point in controlling the pests where I have to take more drastic measure, measures like an infestation like my white flies here <laughs> what I'm gonna do this week actually is cull all the kohlrabi process that and the cabbage because they're going to bolt here this week anyway with the 97 degree weather and the humidity um, and that'll help to get rid of that but I just wanted to talk a little bit about a couple things that are approved by the USDA for use by, by organic growers. And again, I don't have a certification, but I do consider myself 
an organic gardener. So neem oil contains fatty acids, antioxidants, and antimicrobial compounds, and is a naturally occurring pesticide that's found in the seed from the neem tree. It kills soft-bodied insects like aphids, mealybugs, mites, thrips, and white flies. The other thing that I like to use if I have to is Bt. Now Bt is Bacillus thuringiensis, and it is a microbe found in soil that creates proteins that are toxic to larvae of many, many insects. Uh, like mosquitoes, black flies, um, me caterpillars, moths, the cabbage moths, cabbage caterpillars, things like that. So if I need to, I will spray BT on my, the things that I get the cabbage worms with, like cabbages or um, sometimes my squash, sometimes. But those typically get powdery mildew first. <laughs> and how I deal with that is I cut off the diseased stem or leaf and make sure to discard that. I don't compost anything that has disease because you don't want that coming back in your compost and, it, and some pathogens will continue to live in your soil. So you wanna dispose of those properly. And the last thing guys that I like to use in my garden are natural kitchen remedies. Obviously, um, I use a lot of eggshells that I keep from our chickens. I crush them up, I sprinkle them everywhere in my garden to prevent slugs and snails from eating my roses, my hostas, things like that, um, uh, other insects as well. And then I will also sprinkle some cinnamon for ants, uh, cayenne pepper for ants and other bugs. And then I will use about three tablespoons to a quart of water with baking soda. So three tablespoons bake baking soda to one quart water and spray for fungus. So it's, Sometimes, which I have right now in my tomato bed, I have some fungus growing. Um, and so instead of spraying any type of pesticide for that, which I don't want to do, especially at the roots of my tomatoes, I, I instead use baking soda. So there you have it, guys. Um, those are just a couple of the ways that I treat uh, in my garden to grow as organically and as naturally as possible. If I have an infestation that's gonna decimate my whole garden, then I do use the neem oil or the BT, but I use it very sparingly. I also only apply it at dusk when most pollinators are not out because I don't want um, them to be in any sort of danger. Should be fine for them, but you never wanna take the chance when it comes to bees and other pollinators, especially when you take the time to invite them into your garden so much. So, um, I hope this is helpful. We all have pests, we all deal with them, but you don't have to spray things like seven dust to have a beautiful garden. Um, and if you're, some bugs don't wanna eat your plants, maybe you don't want to either, but don't eat, let them eat all of your plants. I hope this is helpful, guys. I really appreciate the time you spent with me today, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye, friends.